everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at one of the latest statue releases as a part of the Doctor Who Robert Harrop series, this time the Axon Man from the Third Doctor 1971 story, The Claws of Axos. Of course, this is the first of two releases from the Claws of Axos coming out from Robert Harrop, the first of which is the Axon Man, and the second is the Axon Monster being released sometime in 2021. The Axon statue is now sold out on the official Robert Harrop website, and therefore it's only possible to get this product via third-party sellers. It's one of the biggest pros and cons of this range. They are highly collectible in volume, but in turn, as a result, sell out very quickly. So before we take a look at the statue itself, let's take a look at the packaging. Of course, we have the new series style guide to suit the 13th Doctor era, featuring the new series Doctor Who logo. This has been printed in a white typeface with the BBC logo above. In the very centre, we get the inclusion of some Gallifreyan text, along with the unique sticker for this product, stating that this is the 41st product as a part of the Doctor Who series, and it is the Axon Man statue from the 1971 Third Doctor story, The Claws of Axos. It's a limited edition to 200 units. Front of the box is finished off with the inclusion of the Robert Harrop logo, as well as stating that this is a hand-painted limited edition figurine. The packaging itself has been made out of a high quality corrugated cardboard to ensure that the figure is safe on the inside of the box and then of course around to the side we have the design of a TARDIS exterior complete with signage at the top and pull to open sign. The back of the packaging features the same details repeated along with a little bit of company information. And then finally, at the very top of the box, we get the inclusion of a further sticker, once again repeating exactly the same details. However, this time round, we have the unique identification number, which is Unit 179 out of 200. Upon opening the box, we are greeted by this rather unusual contraption, which I must admit I was rather surprised by when I opened this for the first time. Now, I don't know if this is something that has been used on some of the most recent statues, because this is the first one that I've bought in quite a while. However, usually the older releases as a part of the series are encased within polystyrene. This is still kind of polystyrene, it's almost stiff foam. I'm guessing it's probably more eco-friendly. However, it does still protect the figure. Of course, we get this case at the bottom and a case at the top, and the statue itself is encased within a bag. Here is the Axon Man doing his best impression of a Cyberman prior to it breaking out of its casing within that cliffhanger in Earthshock. We meet again, Doctor. As with all Doctor Who Robert Harrop statues, we get the inclusion of a certificate of authenticity, once again styled in a rather similar way to that of the packaging. Once again, with the number handwritten on, which is a really lovely touch, and we also have an image of the axon from the story itself, as well as the Robert Harrop logo. And then flipping around to the back, we get further details about Robert Harrop, as well as a little bit of his story synopsis, and a quote from the episode itself. The Axon Man is one of those Harrop statues that I imagine may not appeal to as many when compared to the likes of some of their other releases, including the Yeti and Cyberman. But having this statue in hand is actually a really vibrant piece that stands out on the shelf. But for those who like intricacy and varied sections of detail, this one may not be for you. What you see is very much what you get. It's a man in a rather skin-tight outfit after having his head and hands dunked in gold paint. The overall body build does appear to be slightly bulkier compared to the axons that we see within the 1970s serial. This gives the statue a more sturdy, less fragile feel and appearance. Zooming in closer to take a look at the costume, the base colour is a yellow. This is consistent on the torso, legs and arms. The shade that is used appears to be slightly more pastel compared to the colour used on the character options action figure, appearing to be slightly bronze in finish. Something that isn't as noticeable at first glance is the smaller creased wrinkle detail present between the armpits and the curves on the arm. A great touch, and I love little nods like this, to suggest the fact that this is indeed a costume from a TV production as opposed to an actual alien. It's a little bit like the wetsuit detailing seen on the Invasion Cyberman action figure. It's not really meant to be there, however it's still nice that it has been incorporated into the action figure variant. Running up the centre, 
centre of the costume is a seam. This is sculpted into the statue material. Again, a really nice attention to costume detailing. The most obvious detailing is the oddly shaped cream sections across the entirety of the Axon's body. These vary in shape and size, and remind me of something you would see under a microscope. The outline of the shapes is also sculpted into the statue material, making them stand out further, although there are a number of paint bleeds here and there, which is a little bit of a shame. However, these are only noticeable if you look really closely. Moving further down to the legs, there really isn't too much else to say. The feet are very flat and lack in bone structure, or toes. And that's one of the very creepy things about the Axon. Even though this product is named the Axon Man, there is something oddly genderless about it. The basic, nondescript body with no personal imperfections or detailing. The hands, however, do have a little bit of human detailing, with the inclusion of fingers individually sculpted, including a gold finish over the top, both sculpted in an open palm position. As a side note, it is also worth noting, because I do often get comments about this, this statue does not have articulation, it is one solid piece, it does not move, it is not an action figure. And now we move up to the top of the statue, the Axon's face, and once more we have that creepy expressionless design without personality, and pretty much a symmetrical face. The base colour this time is gold, which is a stark change to that of the yellow used on the rest of the body. The contours of the face are sculpted excellently, with the lips sculpted in a sharp, pouting manner. Meanwhile, the nose, cheeks, eyebrows and jawline all have a very hard straight design, as if the face has been chiselled out of stone or a statue. Towards the sides of the mouth, we have a less harsh curved line used, giving a slight sense of expression. The eyes are exaggerated with a thick padded section at the top and bottom of the lids, almost looking as if he's been stung by a load of wasps. The eyes are empty with no iris and pupil, looking very ominous indeed. As we turn to the sides, we have the slight suggestion of of ears, and the hair has been sculpted in a Medusa-esque curled fashion. Lots of sections intertwined, building up a rather thick head of hair. Both the head and the hands have a black ink-looking wash over the top. This is perfect and draws further attention to those more intricate details, in particular the strands of hair, nose, and mouth. It's smaller details like this that set the Robert Harrop statues apart from some of the other Axon-themed merchandise that have been released from the likes of Eagle Moss and Character Options. As always, the Axon statue comes with a specially designed themed base, this time having the appearance of a concrete paving slab. This has a base colour of grey, with further shades applied over the top to make the surface look worn. An added burnt red wash has been applied over the top of this, making it look visually more interesting. Within the centre, there is also a crack design running from the bottom to the top, emphasised with an almost damp looking yellow substance, achieved using a gloss finish. The bottom half of the base features the usual white trim, along with the initials of the sculptor around the back. On the base, we have the usual material included, to stop the statue sliding about when on the shelf, along with the company sticker and the unique identification number handwritten on, mine being unit 179 out of 200. Again, it's little touches like this that make the Harrop series a delight to collect. In summary, for the Axon Man statue from the Third Doctor serial The Claws of Axos, it's an interesting release with lots of smaller intricate details that you may not expect at first. Admittedly, this statue is not the most exciting compared to some of the other previously released Robert Harrop statues, but if you are a collector of the line, this statue is most certainly a nice addition to the shelf, especially alongside the Axon Monster going up for pre-order on the 26th of February 2021. I love the sheen of gold applied to the head and hands, especially with the darker wash applied over the top, drawing attention to those smaller details. The costume is also representative of what we see within the serial, featuring the yellow and cream splotches, and overall it most definitely looks the part. With Robert Harrop products, you know that you're purchasing a product of high quality, and you're pretty much guaranteed that the statue 
statues will always sell out eventually, making it a great collector's opportunity. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the host productions for brand new Doctor Who content each and every week, from big finish audio drama reviews, product reviews and much much more. So thanks for watching, have a nice day and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.